Have you ever heard of Hansen's disease? Well, you might not have heard of Hansen's disease, but you probably have heard of leprosy. So Hansen's disease is the other name for leprosy. And leprosy is still ongoing today in the world, in various areas of the world, particularly in India, Brazil, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and there are cases in the United States and everywhere else in the world too, although rare. But what does leprosy affect? We always think of it affecting the skin. Like we see people, I'll put up pictures of how it affects the skin on the body. And this is, is a bacteria that affects more than just the skin. It affects the peripheral nerves. That's why one of the main symptoms is this numbness and tingling in the hands, feet, and other areas of the body. And it also affects the mucous membranes, the eyes, the um, nose, the throat, and the longer it is untreated, the more permanent the damage is to the areas of the body that it is affecting. If it is affecting the nose after several years, you're going to not just have problems with the skin, but you're going to have a collapse of the nose. Okay, so now we know what it is. Let's talk about why is it called Hansen's disease because I always find these little tidbits interesting. It's called Hansen's disease because Dr. Gerhard Henrik Arm Armia Arm 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 Hansen, a Norwegian physician, discovered the bacteria, which is called Mycobacterium leprae, and he discovered this in 1873. So see how old this is. This can be traced back thousands of years. TB can be traced back even further, but uh, leprosy is something that's been around for a very, very long time longer than smallpox, longer than the plague. It was in medieval times. Of course, they didn't know what to call it. And in medieval times, they thought that if somebody had these skin lesions and skin disease issues going on, that they were plagued with, say, witchcraft, or they were plagued with, uh, they were sinners, bad people. And they were ostracized. So they were made to feel terrible. And this was a curse from God. So the people didn't want them, they didn't want to be around them, but they didn't want them near them in their communities. People with leprosy have been living a life in the past, have been living a life, even some are still isolating themselves, but they don't have to anymore, but they have lived a life of isolation and social stigma. How is it transmitted? It's transmitted from a pregnant woman to her unborn child, but the primary spread is through respiratory droplets from prolonged close contact. It's not considered a highly contagious disease, but if you live with somebody who has it and they're coughing because it's in the respiratory droplets and you're around this long enough, of, you know, of course your chances of getting this are high. 95% of people have a natural immunity to the disease. Risk factors include living in endemic areas, poor living conditions, and genetic susceptibility. That's really interesting that 95% of the people have a natural immunity to this. Of course, everything I'm saying I will list below. I have researched this, I've read about it, and my dad lived in Hawaii. He's from there. Um, he has since passed away, but I always was interested in that, what they called at that time, leper colony. What's the oldest settlement or leper colony? The oldest one is the Hindala Leprosy Hospital in Sri Lanka, which was established in 1708. It's considered one of the oldest leprosy hospitals in South Asia and it's believed to be Asia's first leprosy hospital. Let's talk about symptoms. Again, we always think about the skin. So if there are skin patches or skin lesions or a, a spread of skin white or pink or even red patches on the hands or on the body, that is one of the most common symptoms. There's also peripheral numbness and tingling to areas such as the hands and the feet. Interestingly though, there's no cough, no fever, no body aches. So that's like one of the only things that doesn't have those symptoms because that seems to be included in, in most. This is not a viral illness, this is a bacterial illness. All right, so on to the really good stuff. Is it curable? Why do we think of leprosy and we think that it is uh, something that is, it's still listed as chronic. So why would it be chronic bacterial disease when it is totally curable? 
Well, um, the research states that it is still considered a chronic disease because the incubation period is anywhere from 2 to 12 years. So your uh, infectious disease might not even show itself for five years. So five years is about average. All those years, it's been ongoing and causing damage. You didn't know it. But it now is curable. But what um, maybe peripheral damage occurred at year two or three might still be with the person for life. It's curable with multi-treatment drug medications. These are antibiotics. And antibiotics, of course, came around to be used for humans around the 1930s and 40s. But the, medic the first medication that came out to treat leprosy was in 1941. As I mentioned, India is one of the areas of the world that still has a high rate of uh, of cases of leprosy or Hansen's disease. And they have an initiative going on right now where they are trying by the year 2027 to eradicate leprosy in their country. So is financing a problem? Is uh, affordability a problem? It is not because it is free. It is 100% free all around the world by the World Health Organization. So who is who distributes it around the world to countries to be able to treat people with Hansen's disease? So let's just go over some basic facts. Leprosy, also called Hansen's disease, is an infectious disease that's caused by a bacteria. It is transmitted through uh, respiratory droplets, close contact with a person who has it, or a pregnant woman transmitting this to her baby. It is curable, not just treatable, it is curable. It is free around the globe to get the multi-treatment, multi-drug treatments. The person is not contagious anymore after they have started the treatment. They don't have to be isolated once they have begun treatment. Is there a vaccine? There is a vaccine that gives partial protection, and that is the TB vaccine. But they are working on a vaccine currently to uh, help give 100% protection from Hansen's disease. So it's in the works right now. So remember that it is curable and the sooner the person gets treatment, the better. But as we know, the incubation period can be very, very long. It can be years until the person knows that they have leprosy. But the big question is, can they still get cured? Can they get proper treatment if it's been many years? Yes, they can. And they still they can still get cured. That's why we hear about being it being chronic because, again, as mentioned, those things that have set in from this disease at the beginning might still be ongoing for that person. Have any of you been to Hawaii and heard about this or talked about this? Have you been to any of the other places that still have leprosy settlements? What are your thoughts on this? I find that I always find infectious diseases to be extremely interesting. And uh, I, like I said, I, I grew up hearing a lot of this and hearing about people being stigmatized way back in the day in the 70s and 80s when I was in Hawaii with my dad. And he used to talk about the island. Which island is it, you guys? Is it Molokai? Is Molokai the one? <laughs> I got to look that up and put it up here if I've got it wrong. But I have not been to Molokai. Um, I do know that I used to hear about uh, different P Christians coming to different uh, leper settlements and preaching and staying with those that have this disease. Again, it, there was no cure for it until the 40s. So people were sick for a very long time as it goes back thousands of years with no cure and no treatment for it. So um, the, the Christians did come in and not just spread the word, but come in and live with the people and risk their own health and stayed with them. I will look up the name of the one that I remember about in uh, Hawaii. He's very famous and books have been written about him. Thank you to the new subscribers. I am just thrilled. Um, please introduce yourself. Say hello if you want. Tell me where you're from or just give it a thumbs up so I know that you're out there and that you enjoy this content. Please share with anybody who might find this interesting. And if you like topics like this where we discuss medicine and different medical topics, I've had several suggestions and have done what people have suggested as far as pr presenting and talking about different topics or hard to discuss topics like say the difference between hospice and palliative care but if you like myths about medicine facts about medicine or even some medical oopsies that go on please consider subscribing see you in the next video